there's a basic reality of physics that photographers can't avoid. Light behaves differently in water than in air. This is a story of one man's ingenuity to overcome the optical challenges of filming underwater. For the first time in a history of motion picture, we are able to capture the images that are free from distortion and sharp to the edge. Ever since he started diving, cinematographer Paul Aptol has taken a video camera with him. I just wanted those images to be as good as we see images in a cinema that are shot on land. I've caught up with Paul on Tasmania's east coast. Today he's chasing a dragon. The weedy sea dragon, that is. Filming underwater is nothing new, but what has changed is small, cheap cameras like this that mean that anyone can have a go. And for a tiny lens in a plastic housing, the results are surprisingly good. But to capture images with enough details to fill entire cinema screens in sharp focus from edge to edge needs a complete rethink of waterproof housings. Pal uses small but very expensive cameras that shoot in ultra-high definition called 5K. Yep, that's 5K. It's even better than HD. But what does it mean? The image on your screen is made of tiny squares of colour called pixels. High definition has a picture that's 1,920 pixels wide. 5K has 5,120 pixels across the screen. That's an image made of nearly 14 million pixels. You're watching this in a resolution of standard definition, a measure of the number of pixels on the screen. By comparison, the latest cinema cameras record in 5K. That is 40 times more pixels than you can see right now. And the more pixels, the sharper the image. From his bush workshop, Powell combines his passion for diving with expertise in engineering. Yes, this is a 5K cinema camera, known as a Red Epic. There is no... He's designed his own housing, milled from a block of titanium, to take his cameras diving. Ironically, the more cameras improve, the more imperfections they can see. Well, digital cinema cameras have much bigger sensor than what we used to have with high-definition cameras, and this is the size of the sensor. Its area is seven times greater than the one in your home video camera. The larger the sensor, the more detail it can record through the lens. When Powell started filming underwater 15 years ago, the standard housing put the lens behind a glass window known as a flat port. If you ever stuck nose against aquarium glass, you could see those rainbow colored edges and everything distorted and fuzzy. That sort of image is created by flat port. To correct those optical problems, the traditional solution is a dome port. The problems start to occur when images get larger, and this is something introduced by the dome. A dome port projects an image that's not flat. The image is only sharp on a curved focal plane, like, let's say, this apple. HD sensors are flat, about the size of this stamp. Because they don't match the curved focal plane of the apple, the edges of the image they record are blurred. It becomes a much bigger problem when the sensor size is this big, which is the 35 millimeter cinema camera sensor. As we can see, where it appears sharp is far away from the flat surface of the sensor, and it's not going to be sharp around the edges and the corners. And the bigger the sensor, the bigger the dome port needs to be to avoid distortions. The solution? Get rid of the dome port altogether. This little beauty is a submersible lens, state of the art in the 1980s. And this is an ultra high definition digital camera, the very latest. The beauty of this innovation, the eureka moment in fact, was to marry the two together. So the camera technology has finally caught up with the quality of the lens. Well, this is old uh, Nikon Nikonos lens. 
Um, this lens was designed for still picture cameras um, back in the 80s. And this lens was specifically designed to take sharp pictures in the water. It projects a flat image on the image plane, unlike the image that is created by a dome port, which is curved. Powell has perhaps the world's largest collection of these old lenses, which he purchases second-hand on the internet. The engineering challenge was to create a lens mount that would protect the camera inside the housing while exposing the lens to the water. Powell calls it Deep X. He photographs standard test patterns in a water tank to compare the performance of flat ports, dome ports and his submersible lenses. He also asked the manufacturers if they'd done any tests. And essentially the response was none. And no one has ever been able to quantify the optical quality of underwater housings. How do you quantify the performance of lenses like this? Well, I use Imatest software, which essentially shows um, how many pixels it takes to go from black to white. And how did this lens go? Well, this here shows that we require approximately four pixels to go for the entire transition. By taking four pixels to cross from black to white, the Nikonis lenses make a sharp image. Others take up to 20, which makes a much softer image. Here's visible proof. This was shot for the London Olympic Games using Powell's housing with the 15mm lens on the outside. The evidence is underwater. You can see from the tiles on the pool that there are no distortions and the image is sharp and detailed from corner to corner. By getting rid of dome ports, Powell's innovation also enables another leap forward. Smaller, more portable, 3D photography underwater. Generally, you want two cameras to be as close together, pretty much like human eyes are. And with 12-inch dome, it's obviously impossible. So the use of the Nikonos lenses, which are much smaller, allowed me to bring the cameras very close together, pretty much touching each other, and therefore using a stereoscopic 3D setup. How does the weight of that compare with other underwater rigs? Well, this one is 24 kilos, so it's um, You can lift manageable. it yourself? Yes. <laughs> what are they normally? Oh, I think the lightest is about 200 kilos. <laughs> you need a small crane. Yes, you do. While underwater 3D rigs are cumbersome, Powell's housing allows him to single-handedly get up close and personal with wary marine life. It was just a matter of time for someone to say, aha, we have those lenses that were designed for that purpose. Why don't we use those? They're smaller, cheaper, lighter, and produce much better images. 